Hi muckers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So we are going to be getting to Observe, who has posted another follow-up video on Johnny. And whenever I saw this, I was actually very interested to see how this was going to go. Um, but basically, he is kind of decompressing the Johnny interview with Swip. And I have seen a clip where he's asking Swip for the six hours unedited so he can look through that, which sounds intense. Um, but he is put everything together and he's looking at it and giving his body language analysis. Now, one thing out of the bat, what I think he's going to say, I have not watched this video. I saw one clip on TikTok where he was saying that he asked Swip for, you know, the entire six hours. What I think he's going to pick up on is, okay, I'm going to give my prediction. Milo, are you good? Milo is meowing like crazy in there. My predictions is he's going to mention that Johnny smiles a lot when recalling like really sad events. Um, and that he seems like overly cocky and an enthusiastic, if you will. I think he's also going to pick up on, you know, Johnny would go like, this a lot whenever he would lie and i'm not even saying that as like a body language thing i'm saying that like johnny had a tendency to like when he lied he would go like well so i think he's gonna pick up on that too where johnny would be like well because he did it with like his laptop or something he was like you know my laptop it's like what the fuck so i think he's gonna pick up on that is there anything else i think he's gonna pick up on god i can't remember the johnny interview um i think the smiling in that is the main things and also probably just how much of a dickhead he is. <laughs> Does that pick up on the body language? <laughs> You're giving dickhead energy. Um, all right, let's get into this. Uh, you will notice that it is fairly chopped up. So just keep that in mind. That does make it a little bit more difficult for accuracy's sake to not be able to gather that surrounding nonverbal information. But there's still plenty to be able to get from this. So let's go ahead and without further ado, dive right in. Can you tell me about how many times you would estimate that you hung out with Josh uh, in person? He would say stuff to me like, oh my God, come to, Calif uh, come to California for my show. And I'd be like, also, one thing I do want to say is if people are going to be like, oh, Johnny's avoiding eye contact, like that means he's lying. I'm not defending Johnny here, but whenever you're doing an interview, it's very awkward if you're not in person and staring into a screen and then staring into the webcam are two very different things. And it's almost more natural when you're doing an interview or even when I'm talking to you right now for me to like look down here or look down here rather than looking directly into the camera. And I do want to pick up as well that there's not, um, I don't think there's necessarily something to be gauged from anyone avoiding eye contact because I think that's so broad as well, even in person. Like sometimes I don't want to give direct eye contact you know like intensely or maybe i do or maybe the person i'm talking to doesn't want to i don't necessarily think it means that someone's lying um it's different levels of comfortability i mean some people also just don't like it at all um i do want to pick up on that he hasn't said that but if i know people were commenting on my video being like oh my god johnny didn't give eye contact to swip once during the interview and i'm like do you realize he's sitting in front of a computer right now uh-oh uh-oh. Any comment for Johnny? Oh, you have more to say. Anything else? Interesting, Milo. Really, 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 really interesting. Um, all right. So yeah, I do just want to note that as well, because I think if you were even to watch like my interview with Swip, like I also think there's things that like we do as humans that like people can say, Oh, you're doing that, like that's a sign of lying. But even if I'm telling you the God's honest truth, I could possibly do things that are like signs of lying, and I think that anyone would. Does anyone agree with that as well? I've always like I've always enjoyed observes videos but i've always been a little bit skeptical whenever it comes to body language you know anal analysis things in general just because i feel that it's very broad um this is nothing taking away from this video or anything but i've had this conversation with my mom where it's like 
people could watch one of my YouTube videos where I'm telling you the dead honest truth and maybe I look down or maybe I play with my hands or maybe I'm picking at my fingers or, you know, maybe I'm, you know, you know what I mean? So I think that I'm going to go into this video with an open mind. I also know what Johnny is lying about in this video, so it'll be interesting to like see if he picks up on things that I know that Johnny is lying about, but let's get into it. Again, I mean. Like, are you serious? You'd be like, yeah, come on down. And I'd be like, whoa, sick. You can ask anybody. He would be like, oh yeah, me and Johnny, we're gonna take over the world. We're gonna make it big together someday. This guy is so cool and so selfless. Like what a good person. Do you still have, I'm just yeah. curious, do you still have uh, your text conversations? I'm gonna go ahead and pause that before he answers this next question. So something that I do wanna make note of is that the Josh person is in regards to Pauline. And so he's being invited by Josh to go to these different shows, which is cool. And I understand that. So the issue that starts coming up here, which we'll be able to see this more as it develops throughout the interview is Johnny's perception of himself as opposed to the people that he's around. So here we have a, a fairly famous YouTuber asking a fan to be able to be like, yeah, why don't you come to a show? That would be great and being kind, saying things that are questionable like the, oh, we'll take over the world and stuff together, like that sort of side of things. However, none of what Josh has presented according to Johnny here is unusual behavior. And it's not out of the ordinary. It's just a, a person being kind to a fan, but there is more that goes into this. Uh, now let's just keep watching this. Conversations with Josh, that I can check because my old MacBook Pro revived itself. If I like, that thing for Johnny, I'm no body language analysis person, but Johnny going, that I can check. See, here we go with this. And I know that Johnny's lying about that. You know that Johnny's lying about that. So it's easier for us to be like, oh, he's lying because we know he is. But that I can check. Why is that your answer? I can check. Just answer the question, dude. Move it a little bit. It shuts off completely. And I have to move quick and in small segments. So I really, really Why is he smiling so much? Information, the meat and potatoes. I remember, gonna go ahead and pause there. This is an interesting response to this question. Do you still have access to the texts between you and Josh? And he does initially a smile and tilts his head to the side. Oh my God, he doesn't just do a smile. He does the David Dobrik smile. Did you see that? He goes like this. He does the David Dobrik smile. Access to the texts between you and Josh. And he does initially a smile and- <gasps> Oh my God, he does the David Dobrik smile. The Oh, that damn smile. Tilt his head to the side. So that smile, maybe it could be something in the long arm. Wait, the two things I said before this video was the smile and the tilt. Wait, he just mentioned both of them. Ugh. I know my new calling in life. Kinds of duping delight or duper's delight. I don't know that that's the case there. However, what I do find fascinating right after that is how he begins to immediately pack the answer that he just gave to Swoop. And it adds all these different details in there about how his computer, you'd move it and it does this and that and this and that. And I had to focus on this and I had to do that instead of that. Lots of distractions. And it just strikes me as fascinating. Now, that packing of an answer is an indicator of nervousness or agitation around that question. Now, that could be for deceit. That could be just out of nerves in general. In this area, I do believe that it's indicating deceit, largely because also throughout the rest of the documentary, he also has instances of being able to easily retrieve certain items of information that he wants to from this supposed broken computer. So this feels Ooh. like he's making an excuse. To not, not a computer being a common denominator between Cody and Johnny. Johnny's one was broken. Cody wanted one. Also, this is really interesting, and I 100% agree with him here, where overloading an answer with information that doesn't matter kind of takes away from the original question you were asked as a form of distraction. And that was exactly what Johnny was doing. He didn't have an answer for Swift's question, so instead just overloaded her with information. Okay, you're onto something. You're onto something. Not have these texts available. So that is a little low level red flag here, right at the very, very beginning, but there is quite a bit of footage to go through. So let's just keep going. I remember it was around 2013, starting to see this Adam kid pop up. So he was getting this access to Colleen Ballinger and all of us online by going. Okay, I'm gonna be very interested. I've never watched a body language analysis video where someone is lying about me and I'm now going to watch someone analyze someone lying about me. Ooh, this is very interesting. <laughs> Under his parents' nose. This feels weird. And pause here. Now Johnny has grouped himself in with Colleen Ballinger and all of us. So this grouping, this is another indicator of what Johnny perceives himself as, perceives his value in this group and where he fits in with things. So he's already letting this us know so uncomfortable. as to what his perception of things was. Perhaps it wasn't how everybody else was viewing it, but it is how he has viewed it. And this isn't something that seems to be out of the ordinary for Johnny's perception of things. We'll be able to point that out in a little bit. So we, as a 15, 16 year old, I didn't want to be talking to a nine or 10 year old. So. But he wants to be talking to boys. I mean, men. Oh, we just kind of picked on him for being so young. And I say bully because I, hand on my heart, I, I in, was involved in mean stuff. But wait, okay, so during this time, when he's referring to the age difference between him and Adam, you see that it discussed, obviously, coming to the corner of his nose, talking about the age difference between them. And then after that, he's talking about doing not so kind things, picking on a younger kid, and then he's saying bully. And I say bully because, and he goes through this entire 
detailed explanation as to what he perceives he has done or what he perceives was done. This feels so intimate to watch because I'm currently watching someone dissect someone lying about me. Oh my god. Okay, this is very weird. This is very, very, very weird. You have no idea how weird this is. Because I could watch him be like, oh, he's not lying. But I know that he's lying. You know what I mean? This is, this is one of the weirdest videos I've ever fucking watched. Centered around this very distasteful sort of behavior towards somebody just because of their age, which in and of itself is not a really great character point for Johnny, but it's not the worst thing that anybody has done. It's just not that great. And then along with that, we're seeing that he's having a lot of difficulty saying these things as he's having a lot of halts in his phrasings. And then along with that, we're seeing some lip compressions and no shapes in there as well as he's really having difficulty saying, yeah, I was pretty much a terrible person to this other person because they were younger than me. And that's just how I roll. And so this is just really letting us understand a little bit more about what Johnny's character actually is. Now, this has nothing to do with his testimony about Colleen Ballinger. This is its own thing. This is now focusing on Johnny. So let's keep watching this. But he was lying there as well. Like, I know for a fact, and you know for a fact, he was lying. Like, that didn't happen. He didn't bully me because we weren't the same generation of Twitter. Nose is running. When it comes to Adam, personally, I don't really think I partook. Even when me and him spoke you just said you did. for the first time last month, he even said he really didn't feel like I was invested in the bullying. If he wanted to be a part of the tiny chats, we never gave him the information for it. We'd be like, ew, okay. And then we'd kick him out and be like, no. And then she'd swoop into his DMs and be like, hey, Adam. Not hey, swoop bestie. in. Which is, mm -hmm. it's just, it's so bad. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause here. I don't have a lot of certainty in Johnny's recollection of how he treated Adam largely because even at the very end of his own recollection of what Adam said to him, it ends with this trailing upwards of tone and indicator of uncertainty. So that doesn't encourage a lot of confidence in what Johnny's saying. And now he goes to start describing how Colleen would come in and be like, okay, so we would kick the kid out because he's a kid. And yes, we may have bullied him some, but you know, that's just how things are. And so we would kick the kid out and then Colleen would come in and swoop in and she would be like, hey, best blah, blah, blah. And then Johnny tries to kind of divert the attention from him doing a rather crappy hey, thing Colleen. to person to really let's again focus on Colleen and about how Colleen was being weird in this situation. Now, chances are everybody was not doing super great in this situation. And this really does become more and more apparent as you go through at least this video. If you do have the time, I do suggest you go and watch the video over on Swoop. They do a lot of unpacking of details around it, including pictures of receipts and interviews, blah, 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 the whole thing, go check that out. But in regards to what we're seeing so far, we're getting a more and more clear mindset as to who Johnny is, not the least of which is that he's willing to put other people into discomfort for the sake of his own happiness or self-perception. So this is just something that we want to be able to understand about him as we continue forward. Bad. Because like, Whoa. we could have protected Adam a little bit if we did be Whoa. Him. When, he, when he had given you his phone number, what, what was that like at the time? Um, just real quick, this is obviously switching around to a different portion of the interview. I don't believe that Johnny ever once had it even in, in crossing his mind to want to protect Adam. I don't think that Johnny- We already know that. Anybody else outside of himself in regards to all of this. You'll see a bit more of why that is in a little bit, but just want to make that note. Now we're going to be talking about a different Work. situation between Josh and Johnny again. At the time, Fierce. it was very surreal. Fierce, he has called Johnny's bullshit for no reason. <laughs> he was like, and fuck you, Johnny. Remember him handing me back the crowd? I feel like I remember him saying something like, use this whatever you feel like you need to, or something like that. And my attention that night on diverted over to Josh. I was more of a Josh fan than a Colleen Miranda fan. I was you were a Josh lover. But Josh gave me so much attention, attention that Colleen didn't really give me. So I felt like, hey, if I could at least be closer to him. Let me throw something out there. If Josh gave Johnny so much attention that Colleen didn't give him, and we've seen that Josh didn't give Johnny any attention, what attention did Colleen give Johnny? since I'm not super close to her. Do you remember what the... I'm gonna go ahead and pause there again. So we're hearing again what is important to Johnny in regards to this. He's saying that on this night that Josh gave him his phone number. Big moment. That part, I do actually kind of believe the flow of that. He didn't seem to have any issues verbally. He didn't seem to have any issues non-verbally. It just seemed to be him recollecting... We know what happened, though. Josh giving him his phone number. Not, he just not how he said. Switch that he had in his mind from being a fan of Colleen's or to being a fan, more of a fan of Josh's. And the reason for that is because Josh gave him more attention that Colleen didn't. And so what this is also able to be understood as is that Josh was being more nice to a fan than Colleen was being nice to a fan. And because of that, Johnny went ahead and latched a little bit more on to Josh. Now, this isn't anything that has to do negatively with Josh. It doesn't have to do negatively with anything. It just lets us know what is important to Johnny and his goal line here. And it's so far, he's letting us know that he's willing to put others down and he's seeking after attention in regards to this. So this is a very oh! eccentric move of Johnny all the way oh! through. The conversation was... Fuck! He just says these, like... These, like, snarky, like, remarks and doesn't even, like, bat an eyelid. Holy fuck. That took me by surprise. Love it. You were having with him right before he put his number in a crown. They were just signing the crown. We were all about to leave. That's around the moment. I'm pretty sure Colleen said something about griefing. And my dad was like, what did she just say? And I was like, oh my God, I have Joshua's phone number. Really heard my, or really hope my dad didn't just hear Colleen say queef. Okay, so. and I, I guess I didn't realize that this was, that your parents uh, were, or at least your dad was there with you at the time that he was writing his phone number in the crown. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm more clear. I guess I don't know how I, I missed it that your your family was there. Did yes. your parents, did they know that he had given uh, you his number? Whoa, I've, I need to go back and watch the swim again because this is the only time now I'm picking up that like, did Johnny not notice in that moment that Swip started to doubt his story and like piece it together? Like Swip there is is literally saying, oh, this is the first time like I'm putting it together that your family were there. Like, did Johnny have no opinion that he was like selling his story, you know, like selling it out kind of thing? What the fuck? Crown gave you that little nod of affirmation. My first initial response was, I don't want the other people to see that I just got this phone number because then everybody's going to flock and try to get it from me or like steal this crown. When did your parents uh, learn that you had uh, got his phone number? I like held it close and I like double checked to like make sure. And I think I even like showed Candace doing the damn thing. Okay, so maybe school didn't work out for him, but like maybe he's meant for something. Maybe he's going to do something. Maybe Josh can be a mentor. This was my ticket to success, my ticket to happiness. No one could take it away from me. What the fuck? I need to go back and rewatch the Swip thing. This is him being like, my ticket to success, my ticket to whatever. And I, I heard that in the moment, but I think I was so stressed about the overall video that I really didn't process what he... I need to go back and rewatch that video. Holy fuck. That is crazy that, like, he's openly saying that him and his family were just looking at Josh like Johnny's ticket to fame. Like, I took that whenever I watched it the first time, but I don't think I really took it in. That is crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and pause that there. So now we're hearing the story about how the phone number was handed across. During this time, I, again, am not actually picking up on any overt red flags from Johnny as far as desynchronization or anything slipping through his facade that he's put on for the camera and interview, his recollection of how the phone number exchange happened. Now, what's important to note is that his family was right there. Why that's important to note is this is all centered around Johnny uh, claiming that he was groomed. And so we're trying to understand some of the, the factors around that, the environment around that, and not the least of which is this large move of the phone number being given over, being done so in the presence of the parents as well. So it's not like it was an isolated incident where Josh had pulled Johnny off to the side and said, hey, here's this. It was unique from what we're understanding from Johnny's tale here is that he didn't give his phone number out to a whole pile of people. It was just to Johnny, but it was still done very publicly. So this is something that we just need to be able to make note of in regards to that. And now we also hear this little line from Johnny again that this, this whole thing, instead of looking at, looking at it as if it was a personable re relationship or anything along those lines, he's talking about how it's his ticket to fame and happiness and blah, blah, blah. And he's not going to let it go. And he's viewing all of this as, as, as something that he's able to take. And so this is really painting it out very, very... But even that, I just... Oh my God. The like... The, the full ticket to fame thing is so, I'm sorry, like, I really haven't enjoyed anyone talking about anyone's, like, family and this whenever it came to the people that are speaking up, because I don't like when people speak about mine, but um, under God, my mom and dad were not as involved in this as what Johnny's were, nor were my parents on the front line at those meet and greets being like, that's our son's ticket to fame. Like, even whenever they, they, like, left me off to lunch with Colleen. Like, that would have never been, uh, when he walks in the doors of that Bunsen burger and eats that burger with Colleen Ballinger, that's his ticket to fame. Like, I'm sorry, but what is wrong with the fucking parents? You know what I mean? Who the fuck? It, it's so... It just is so telling of the entire family and their delusions it is really 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 crazy and no wonder josh wanted to get away from them very clearly in our minds what johnny's mindset is and so far it's just an extremely egotistical mindset but there's a lot of footage still to be able to come through so we're gonna go ahead and continue on through that we're just really gathering a lot of information here wait for me is there gonna be like oh no johnny was in dms with minors i was i'll be the first person to say it i i was in the group that originally was a Colleen group chat that I had been added in. My friend, who I am not friends with it, uh, anymore, overtook that and created the group where he decided to start grooming teenage girls on the internet. You know, there were also chat rooms or DMs. He just loves that word, doesn't he? Whoever taught Johnny the word grooming will face the consequences because since that, anyone to Johnny is a groomer. That I was uh, added to during tour. And it was tricky because I didn't want to be in DMs with a bunch of teenage right? girls. Like, I was, you know... Confident in my second half. Uh oh, uh oh, the self report's coming up, you guys. He doesn't want men, he wants. He doesn't want men, he wants. Uh oh. Reality of anything, I want boys, well, men, to be in my. Gonna go ahead and pause there because this is. Just... <laughs> he went, we're gonna pause there and decompress that. <laughs> oh, God. Just an important place to be able to pause. So he's talking about these group chats and. 
in these group chats, the, the reason that this is such a controversial point is because oftentimes, one, there were minors mixed in with the groups and adults, and so like that's already, uh, it's already a sensitive area to be able to work in. You have to be careful. And apparently inappropriate content and-, and I still can't believe we said that. Held in these group chats, of which Johnny partook. And so this is another area where people are like, well, Johnny's, Johnny's blaming while doing behavior that seems to be the very behavior that he's blaming everybody else on. So this is a red flag. Now, something else that I want to make note of that he did verbally here is he's talking about, yeah, and it was a, it was a touchy situation because I didn't want to be in a group chat with all these teenage girls. And it sounds almost like he's on the right track of saying, yeah, I don't want to be a part of a group chat that's just teenage fans would be it. But that's no. One thing as well, God, I really should watch now that like everyone's gotten the opportunity. I mean, nine days, maybe when it hits two weeks, I'll watch part four. Oh, that's four hours. And I know I would talk for another four hours. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll do like a recap video with like my opinions, right? Because there's so much there to discuss. And I think there's almost so much to discuss. But one thing I do want to say is, and Swift brought up this argument, that the only person who ever made the grip chats that Johnny was in with minors sexual was Johnny. Sorry, part three. Yes. Was Johnny. You know, Johnny was like, oh, in these group chat with fans, like, you know, I'm confident in my sexuality. Like, I don't want them. Like, I want boys. Like, whatever happened to just being, like, say you're completely innocent in this. What is wrong with just being in a group chat? You know what I mean? Like, it is wrong. Like, so don't take away from what I'm saying here. But my point is, like, Being in a grip chat with children is wrong, right? But he's making it even worse by being like, you know, I wasn't looking at them like that. I want boys. You know, he took something that was already morally wrong and just ramped it up. It's like, what the fuck? No, that's not Johnny. Johnny says, I don't want to be in the group chat with all these teenage girls. If anything, I want boys. Catches himself, says men. Oopsie coopsie. That's a pretty substantial verbal slip up there. Now, it could be because he just said girls before, and now he's saying boys because of his sexuality. However, I still think it's important to be able to note that he is still qualifying teenager in this. He doesn't want to be with the teenage girls. He wants to be with... And he's, like, almost 30. He's, like, almost 30. Do you remember when the Cody shit dropped and everyone was like, oh my God, Cody's not a 16 year old, you know, girl. Cody is like a 30 something year old. Why is no one having that reaction with Johnny? Like, can we all be collectively shocked about the fact that Johnny is approaching his 30s and is talking about teenagers still? He doesn't want teenagers. You know, he wants but men, men, men. You're almost 30. Like, that is so fucking weird. Assuming the flow of sentence here, teenage boys. Not think of the children. Oh, that's, that's a rough way to say that. Men. I meant men. And so, like, with that that part of things, it makes me feel a little bit uncertain about his motives. And we're just being able to add all of these different things to what our understanding is of Johnny himself. Let's keep watching. Well, men, to be in my DM, the fans right. were honestly like a safety net at the end of the day. Because when we'd wrap up a day of work, and I'd be walking to the bus, and I'd see all of these people who are excited to see me after I'm just sitting around people who I feel like can barely stand to have me in a room with them, having people who supported me and liked me and the world, there's three I can think of. One of them, actually. You know, I pop in from time to time because I'm gonna go ahead and pause here. Again, we're talking about something that is gaining Johnny more attention and that seems to be his big focus point. Now, one of my things that I was thinking while going through this is, well, perhaps maybe Johnny has some difficulty accepting his own self-worth, so he's validating it by any external source, and perhaps on some level that's true. However, there are other areas of this narrative, of this interview itself, that really allow us to kind of see what, what sort of character he has in regards to his viewing of people and their worth and their value in regards to certain things, and we'll see that in a second. However, we're hearing here, again, the fans, the only importance that fans had to Johnny was that they gave him more attention, which is, again, just adding more context to this character. Let's keep going. The time, because it was fun, I'm not gonna lie. I was like, oh, this is like a, a weird world to be in. Like, I have fans now, like, who am I to not say hi? Or like, it was an ego boost. That's a crazy thing to kind of put together, that everything Johnny talks about all has like one overarching point. And it's attention. At applause, people shouting your name, screaming for you. I was like, Whoa. who the fuck is screaming Johnny's name? You're on a Miranda Sings bus tour, please. They're not even screaming her fucking name. <laughs> and so I was getting added into these DMs. And if I pop in and just say, you know, hey, thanks for the support, everyone would freak out. And they'd be like, oh, that was fun. Colleen and uh, Corey. All right, gonna go ahead and pause that there. So then again, we're hearing more and more instances of 
a very, very important, crucial driving point to Johnny is how much attention people can give him. And this is of all forms, even up to the uproarious praise of the crowds, screaming his name or what have you. He's very into that. That's what his drive is. And this continues to pop up in various areas again and again and again throughout Johnny's narrative, which is very clearly painful. The only people screaming, Johnny, is out of fear when he's running towards them. Like, he is so in his own head about fame and stuff. And it's like, we need to keep reminding him that you were on the Miranda Sings bus tour. Nothing more, nothing less. Painting a picture for us of his character throughout all of this. Now, let's just keep watching. Corey warned me. They said, don't interact with the fans too much. In hindsight, I can say now I could have justified it and been like, well, I'm an adult. I don't want to. I shouldn't be in these rooms. The whole reason I'm be sorry, I'm still gig I was giggling at my joke. <laughs> in the moment of as an adult still looked at the situation and thought to themselves, oh, well, these are underage people and I am a person of a level of influence now. So I'm still going to interact with them and possibly- The killer's escaping! <laughs> ah! Here comes Johnny! No! Is that what he meant? That's what he's getting. Ways. Let's keep watching. I'm coming out with my stories is because it's inappropriate for adults to be friends with children. Can you tell me about so he himself just says it's inappropriate for adults to be friends with children. Nevertheless, he also acknowledges that when he was an adult, he was trying to be friends with children, or at least on friendly terms with children. It is a level of hypocrisy on his side, but yep. there's plenty left of this to go, so let's keep watching. Oh, how many oh, times? Oh, he went, it's a level of hypocrisy, but there's a lot more to go, so we'll just move on. You would estimate that you hung out with Josh uh, in person. Yes. No. when I say hang My out, favorite thing about all this is whenever I spoke to Johnny privately, he brought up the body language... Um, channel observe i'm um, talking about colleen and stuff and he was like oh we've got them now like they're lice just for observe to make a video on johnny <laughs> johnny's two biggest fears came true three swift didn't believe his lies h3 turned on him and observe made a video about his body language the big three I don't want people to have this perception like I was chilling in his living room. We would be in public places. He would be doing something, some show, and I was going as a supporter. He would say stuff to me like, come to California for my show. And I'd be like, are you serious? He'd be like, yeah, come on down. And I'd be like, whoa, sick. He would- Come on down. Like like, I'd be like, okay, you know, I'll come to California. So I know we already touched on this earlier in this interview. Again, this is very cut up and I did my best to be able to find the actual narrative throughout the interview. But from what I'm hearing, even again painted out in this dynamic, it sounds as if Josh and Colleen, these people, these YouTubers are functioning as if YouTube is their job and their shows are their job. And Johnny is, is a fan still kind of coming into support, maybe a closer fan or a known fan, but still a fan that's coming or into support. Or a creepy one. Be there. And so there is still that level of understanding that one person is there because it's their job, they're required to, and because they love doing it, they created this for themselves, and that's them. And then there's Johnny kind of riding coattails. And then there's Johnny. <laughs> Which is okay, except for where we're about. I put on the REM Beauty lip balm, or lip gloss. I love it. I'll get around to. So let's keep watching. Yeah, I'll come see your show. We should grab a coffee or something while I'm out there. And he'd be like, yeah, for sure. There was one instance where I had got out for his show that he encouraged me to go to. I was having a lot of trouble getting a rental car. The two and a half hours I spent at Hertz, I had called Josh. I had called Colleen. I had texted each of them. I'm stuck in LA. I need to be in Irvine tonight to see your show that you encouraged me to come to. Can somebody pick me up? I had invited- Hold on, I missed that part of the story where he's literally like- saying that he's calling Colleen and Josh, it's their responsibility to help him get a car because he's in LA for their show that he invited himself to. Swip is a better woman than me to be able to sit through all this and not be like, you're a twat. Did my friend at the time to go see the show with me. Improv at the Irvine Spectrum here in California. Colleen, Trisha Paytas, Jenna Marble, Shane Dawson, all these like A-list YouTubers pile in and sit at a table right in front of us. And then she looks at me and she goes, oh my God, you made it. I was so worried about you. They were gonna go on and start this show. She was just gonna sit with Shane and Trish and have a fantastic night watching her hubby mope on stage about how he was stuck in her shadows while little Johnny was trapped over by LAX. I need to rewatch this. I need to rewatch this because I did not know that he said that. I need to rewatch this. I don't know if it was because I was almost trying to digest it all or whatever. I did not pick up on the fact that he was saying that, and Colleen was going to go ahead with her show, even though I was stuck at LAX. You made the decision to go to the show yourself. That is crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and pause that there again to revisit what we're talking about. We're talking about A-list YouTubers doing their job doing a show that they created off of their own 
talents off of their own creativity, mm. regardless of how we're feeling about each individual YouTuber. That's what is happening there. Johnny is a fan who was invited, and he's expecting the group of YouTubers doing their job to not do their job, to hold the entire show so that the one fan can be picked up from the airport. And that's absolutely ridiculous. That will never happen that way. It can't happen that way, because believe it or not, it's more than just the people on the stage. There are other people that have jobs, other people that have timelines that they have to stick to. So it could not happen that all of these YouTubers- Oh, this is anything. ridiculous. Oh, did you hear about this man Johnny at the airport? Oh my goodness, he's still, he's over my LAX. And God, this is ridiculous. I didn't even pick up on that. It's a very, very unrealistic approach to this entire social functioning that Johnny specifically is having. He again is relating so much weight and importance to his existence in these social, social circles, despite there not really actually being the need for him to be in there. So we're seeing a very clear picture of Johnny's overly inflated perception of himself and how it comes to play in his social working. Valid. Really letting us understand that it seems as though Johnny will go to any extent to be able to get the attention that he feels he deserves or that he wants. And even through this interview, we've seen time and time again that he will actually push boundaries to do that. So let's keep watching. Okay. Did you ever Ooh. hang out with Josh just one-on-one -on -one alone with Josh? I can at least count on two separate occasions. There was the one where we had our little coffee date at Starbucks when I went to the auto show to visit him. That was just me and him. There was also- When I went to the auto show to visit him. You mean whenever you stalked him at his workplace? Stop calling it a date as well. I brought this up to Swip in our interview where it was like, or wait, did she bring it up to me or did- The conversation came up in, in some capacity. Where it was like Josh keeps or Johnny keeps referring to his time with Josh as something date, lunch date, coffee date, library date, show date, like, bitch, that. <laughs> so the time he was doing a show in Wisconsin, he was in a band called the Cats Pajamas. So I surprised him, me and my family, even the night we had. Gonna go ahead and pause there. We're seeing a lot of disgust and dismissal coming from Johnny in regards to Josh. Jo Johnny does not look at Josh kindly. It's it's mainly mainly showing up in the hooded eyelids, the flutter blinking, and the disgust in the corners of the nose as he's talking about these various things that him and Josh would interact with. And also just a little- I thing wonder what a body language channel would do whenever I do my little on me, little on me, little on me. What does that mean? Does that mean I'm lying? Little on me <laughs> was made note of by Swoop in the documentary that I'll also make note of neither of these two instances that Johnny has proposed here are actually Thank you, Josh were fully alone. It was always in a public space, public setting with other people around. So there is also that side of things. However, we're about to get to this part here that we're getting to see a little bit more context as to how Johnny and even Johnny's family views people's worth. Let's see. Even the night we had dinner, my parents were just razzling him a little bit and they were like, so when are you going to put a ring on it? And he was like, soon, I promise. I just want to be the main breadwinner and da 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 And me and my parents and my sister were kind of like, do you know who, who you're marrying? Like, like she's like in her prime right now on YouTube. And Holy so fuck, Johnny is so delusional. Sorry, this yeah, is crazy to watch back. Here we're seeing very clearly what is important to Johnny and if we're going to take Johnny's word for it, the rest of his family as well. As they're talking to Josh and pushing Josh to put a ring on it, AKA Mary Colleen, which is inappropriate for any external person to do. Just don't, don't, don't pressure anybody in that area. Not only that, their response to him wanting to be able to earn enough money to be the main breadwinner is to have disgust. You could see that playing across his face as he's recollecting this moment that his family had. And then this telling of, you realize that she, you know who you're who you're in a relationship with. She makes so much money, and dude, you only work at the Chicago Auto Show, which I did a little bit of research. The people on there, some of the upper salesmen on there, can make upwards of one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars a year. So it's not like it's a cheap job to work at. However, according to Johnny, he sees and has discussed towards Josh in relation to Colleen because Colleen makes more money. She's in her Johnny, who at the times, well, Johnny, I don't think has a job anymore, and I, but I don't know about that. But Johnny, who at the time only job was running the Sarah-diculous Twitter account. <laughs> I don't think we can really be speaking about jobs, Johnny. Prime, she's more famous, all of these things that Johnny worships, whereas Josh is just a car salesman. So this is letting us know more and more and more just what is important to Johnny, and perhaps it's not even just from Johnny. It could have been something that he grew up in an environment of. Very, very interesting perspective to be able to gain. Let's keep watching. He actively chose to remain in this relationship. He had so many outs. He didn't propose for like nine years. Why did you enter a marriage that was so toxic if you knew it was so bad? You must have wanted something out of it, and it bit you in the ass. He fucked around and found out, and now he's just upset about it. <laughs> At this point, I don't care that he was a victim, because we're not talking about that story anymore. If he wanted to talk about that story, he had every opportunity in 2016. You have... I'm gonna go ahead and pause that there. So there was a number of allegations in regards to the dynamic between Colleen and Josh. Not a healthy situation. Not well handled online. Along with that, Johnny is trying to make the excuse of, well, Josh could have easily gotten out of it if he didn't like that. And that just shows a level of a misunderstanding around a few situations. So he goes through a, a series of victim blaming towards Josh. And then at the very end, we're hearing another statement that is extremely telling. And it's this, 
well, I don't even care if he's a victim. He looks down in a way, perhaps this is something that he knows is controversial to say, aka stupid to say, but he says, I don't even care. And he looks down, does a dry swallow, and then he continues on, you know, because if Josh wanted to say something, he could have done that way back in 2016. And we're talking about other stuff now. And so again, what we're seeing in Johnny's mind is that it's not the importance of the individual, it's the importance of the intention that you can get from the individual. Johnny is exclusively trying to capitalize on everybody else's attention and rake in as much as he can for himself. And this swoop documentary went a very long ways to exposing exactly how he does that. Let's keep watching. Of obvious. Whoa, that was a lot. First of all, that like running three sentences Johnny did from like, no one cares, blah, 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 you had your time, blah, 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 you entered a, it's your fault, blah, 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 was one of the craziest like, sentences runs i've ever seen in my entire life like to think that to say that to confidently stand behind it jesus christ he said uh that you believe that josh groomed you yes can you just give me a summary of exactly what josh did that has made you feel that way josh has an ego a massive one, and it's one that I can pinpoint and address, not even knowing the dude on a personal level to this day. He took the power that he had over me, and it turned into this God complex where I think to this day, he has this skewed idea that he was being a mentor. He was a dude. I'm gonna go ahead and pause here. There's so many things that are just difficult um, for me to acknowledge here. Non-verbally, it's a little difficult to be able to say anything that Johnny's been doing differently here or out of sync or anything along those lines, especially just because of the cuts that are littered about in here. However, what we're hearing in his narrative is a number of things. He's asked someone what was done to you that made you feel like you were groomed. He answers without answering anything. He says, well, I think that the other person had an ego. I think the other person had a god, god complex. I think this and I think that about the other person. Doesn't actually answer anything tangibly about what could have been done towards him that gave him this feeling. So he says that. He also says that he did not know Josh on any level. However, Earlier in the very interview that we're listening to here, he does mention that he did know Josh on many levels, even down to the point of his family and Josh all having dinner together and chatting like that there, that in and of itself is another discrepancy in his storyline. And then along with that, at the very, very end, he's starting to talk about Josh's power dynamic and how there was an abuse of that in that situation, which is exactly what Johnny has been accused of himself. Just a very fascinating thing. We're hearing some of these areas where it, it's it, there's discrepancies, like I said, between what he said earlier and different times. So his story's not lining up. And we're also being able to very clearly hear a character develop behind this story of what's very important to Johnny. Let's keep watching. Who is it, dude? She... And everything he's accusing Josh of is like things that Johnny has given him. You know what I mean? He's going, he has a God complex. No, you gave him one. In your mind, Josh was everything to you. So you gave him everything that you're accusing him. Oh my God, it's just like, in 30, Fuck. who leached on to a vulnerable kid when he was in town. We did the Harlem Shake video. We filmed a little goofy, stupid video from my channel. There was a contest he did once. There were like maybe eight of us who submitted videos. I won, and my prize was a ball of duct tape. It's just the little things if you look at them and see the patterns. Again, if you could. I'm gonna go ahead and pause here because Swoop is about to ask again. Okay, so you, you've gone on this enormous tangent about everything else except for what Josh did to you to make you feel like you were being groomed. So she's gonna address that again in a second because he didn't answer the question the first time around. But what I want to make note of again is that during this time, it sounds very Swip similar. is better than me. I, I couldn't. If I ask the question twice and I'm not getting the answer, I'm hanging up the call. ...to a YouTuber who has a super fan that they're being kind to. Now, should Josh have allowed Johnny to be involved in his life to that degree? Absolutely not, no. But we're not talking about that side of things. We're talking about Johnny here. And with Johnny's perception of things, Johnny walks into the space and has such an overtly elevated perception of his own self-worth that he expects things from these people that are doing their own thing. So it's a gift that Josh did a video with Johnny. Johnny did not deserve the video with Josh. The competition thingy where the, the prize is a ball of duct tape. Okay, that is a competition and nobody deserves a specific value cash prize or whatever for a competition. It could be a ball of duct tape, it could be a dusty shoe. Nobody cares, really, but to Johnny, it's offensive because he's- Or a pair of lingerie. And he needs more attention than that. And he needs more value than that. And if you're not gonna offer it to him, well, then you're useless to him. Hmm. It's it's just rubbing me the wrong way a lot. And this, this entire narrative has, has been difficult for me to keep a level head as I'm continuing forward because I get very frustrated with people like this. However, let's hear him address this question for the second time. And if you could, if you, I'm sorry for asking a second time. No, uh, I just I just want to kind of nail down- Stop smiling! Exactly specifically what you think were the kind of the exact things that Josh did that leave you feeling like you were groomed. Yeah, so first and foremost, giving a 16 year old your phone number, I'm for both. Having conversations about our personal lives, getting to know me on an intimate level. Bad pausing, okay, phone number. We've already talked about, yes, that could have been a questionable move. I, I, I can understand where people would be like, well, why would a YouTuber give a fan their phone number? Oh, this that is, is crazy. Again, though, we are saying, we are understanding that the parents were right there, everybody was in the know, so it's not necessarily this isolation factor that Johnny's trying to paint it out to be. And then, right, right here, we just had Johnny talking about how him and Josh got to know each other on a very detailed level. Whereas earlier in this very same interview, he said he didn't even know the guy. So again, we're having another area where Johnny has 
lied at one point or another. Whichever one it is, and each time that he says something, it seems as though it's only built up to fit the specific narrative that he's talking about at the, at the time that he's talking. Meaning he's just a bad liar. In this one singular interview, there have been so many discrepancies between his own narrative of just saying the exact opposite things at different times. Very fascinating. Let's keep watching. Well, fast forwarding to today, I feel more confident to say I was groomed. Like, but not everyone understands that grooming doesn't always have a full component to it or a full kind of end goal so that it can have different- Wait, he still didn't answer the fucking question. Holy shit. <laughs> Attempts at what it's leading towards. What do you think that Josh was grooming you for? Third time asking. Disturbing part. You would think it would be super disturbing if it was sexual, but that would just be pretty cut and dry. People don't quite understand what God. grooming is, which is why I appreciated your breakdown. Did Johnny just say people don't understand what grooming are whenever Swift literally just said that people don't understand what grooming is? Okay, now we're just stealing sentences. Ugh, I just have to pause here for a second here. Ah, okay. There are a number of things that are happening verbally and non-verbally. Right now, we're seeing the pointer finger come out here, and this pointer finger is a dominating gesture. Nobody. Oh, really you put that finger away, boy. Point. And to see it coming out in a conversation, it usually just builds a bit of tension in that conversation. So he's pulling that pointer finger out. Along with that, he's now trying to paint out this picture of comparisons of traumas and abuse situations and grooming situations. Because again, he's one the one ultimate victim. Or scary or what have you than the other, and that's disgusting for any person to do. And ironically, again, it's his situation that he himself perceives that he was in is the one that's harder. It's here. Down of it in the first segment. I actually highlighted that and posted it on TikTok. It could solely be for power, which to me sounds so much more disturbing. I mean, sexually is horrific, but just for no motive other than power and boredom, that is almost more disturbing than having a very set and stone motive behind what you're doing. Uh, I, I forgot that he said that like, I forgot that he said what happened with him from Josh is worse than sexual grooming. Oh my God, I forgot that he said that. And he said that to Swip, by the way, who has been very open about situations that she has been through. Holy fuck, forgot about that. Hey, what Joshua's motive was, kind of a realization for me, right? So there you have it. He's trying to say again that this perceived idea of grooming, which in the video that Swoop does, they, they break down all of the definitions that go along with this so that you can kind of see one, the, the definitions that Johnny is giving specifically don't necessarily fit the actual definition of grooming. However, say they did. And so we're hearing him again, trying to find a way to inflate his own self-importance and ego, even in regards to the, the possible lies that he's telling about people around him. It's very, very clear to me what Johnny's drive is even going on to this interview. And I think it really bit him in the butt pretty hard, but let's just see how it continues to play. Yeah. Kind of a realization for me right now. I didn't really hang out or talk to Colleen unless we were talking poorly about someone. When your relationship with Joss uh, came to an end, when did you really pull towards Colleen as a friend? I'm not a kid anymore. They're, they're already having like adult conversations with me. It was mean, nasty conversations. But to me, the fact that they were having them with me, I was like, with me? Okay, I mean, me? And when we'd be talking, she'd- They would have conversations with me? Why do you say it like that? With me? <laughs> say horrible things about other YouTubers, which include people like Gabby Hanna, Nikita Dragon. Shout out Gabby Hanna. If we weren't talking about her ex-husband, it was about YouTubers. And just for, sorry, just for clear. So now we're getting some more dynamic from the word of Johnny's mouth as to what him and Colleen were up to. And it sounds as if with me? Of their relationship was centered around being terrible people uh, behind the backs of other people. And to me, this is fairly revealing. But along with that, before we talk about why that's fairly revealing, in case it's not completely obvious, we're also hearing this conversation point that Johnny has brought up that he was already in cahoots with both Colleen and Josh. And cahoots is a good word. Cahoots? <laughs> me? With me? Sorry. Yes, they were saying mean things, I just like, but, once I get but, something in my head, I can't get it out. Cahoots? A stepping stone for himself. Well, now I'm in the inner circle, more or less is what he's saying. So he sees another instance of trauma and drama and... See, now you've got me on a tangent. And I have also just ordered six red bulls to my apartment because i definitely need a little red bull so i've ordered six red bulls not to drink them all tonight but maybe we'll have one or two um with me whenever anyone says trauma you already know where i'm going with this you already know where i'm going with this trauma generational trauma trauma anyone know generational trauma <laughs> generational trauma trauma This was Johnny during the SWIP interview. It's a movie about trauma. It's a movie about trauma. The movie is about trauma. The 2018 movie obviously was a movie about trauma. The whole last movie 
was a study in trauma. It's a lot about so, rage and trauma. So Swip would ask Johnny, so what did Josh do to you? How did Josh make you feel? Rage and trauma, rage and trauma colliding. Trauma and evil meeting. They made a movie about female trauma. Well, it's nostalgia, but it's nostalgia based on trauma. <laughs> what does trauma really look like? This is what trauma looks like. Lori is really a, a dealing with a lot of post-traumatic stress, PTSD, PTSD, PTSD. I liked that it was a movie about this trauma. And I liked that it explored it through generations. Family trauma. Generational trauma. Generational trauma. This is so family long. trauma. It's so long. Tragedy and heartbreak as another thing for him to step on to elevate his own self-importance. It's really letting people see that when push comes to shove, Johnny will treat you however Johnny wants to treat you as long as it gets him attention, praise, fame, money, what have you. But also, and Swift brought something really interesting up, which is very disturbing, which was like Who's to say that at a certain stage, Johnny wouldn't have said that, like, I grimmed him or or Swip grimmed him or, you know, or that we abused him or something like that. Like, as shocking as that sounds, he does that to people. You know what I mean? Like, he will befriend people and then lie on them, but doesn't just lie on them. Like puts their names besides look, look at what he did to tim Connolly whenever he was doing the exact same things you know what i mean trauma and that is a very very clear character sketch of johnny let's keep watching just for, sorry just for clarity on that um when you would like send a, a photo back was that of trisha yeah and usually it was just like us I, I have one screenshot that i saw that i had sent and it's really just like trisha butt ass naked with like a giant smile on her face and i just I'm gonna go ahead and pause that there. So fascinating thing that Johnny is doing here. He's talking about Trisha now and the sending back of the back and forth of inappropriate photos between him and Colleen. And he's trying to paint this picture of disgust about Trisha towards Swoop. And you could see it coming out in the corner of his nose while he's talking about the big smile on Trisha's face while Trisha is doing a nude photo. And he's like, he's doing this over disgust expression, hoping that Swoop is going to reflect that, to mirror that so there can be a level of camaraderie on that. Swoop does not at any level reflect that. And now he's about to try to explain what he said underneath. And he looks off to the side, which makes me feel like something is off there to the side for him to be able to make note of. And he, for some reason, falls apart with what he says underneath. I find that fascinating. I don't think it's because he doesn't remember what it is. I think it's because when he tried to paint this area of disgust on Trisha and Swoop didn't feed into that, now he doesn't have the certainty to say the nasty thing that he probably sent along with. So we're going to hear him have some little oh. stutters and stammers for seeing and eye contact, obviously, to go and reference something. And he's going to have a lot. That's an interesting point. You know, he said about being nasty towards Trisha, but Swoop didn't respond well to it, so he pulled back. Trauma. Generational trauma large amount of difficulty saying what he sent with the picture. So let's just see what that is. I forget exactly what I said, but the caption was just something like, Foul Q, I did that because I'm a lot of insecurity and in that had a substantial lip shrug in there, which is akin to having just a normal shrug with your shoulders as well. So we're seeing the lip shrug in there. We're seeing the lowering of the eyebrows and the very difficult time holding eye contact while saying, oh, this is what I wrote. Oh, Foul Q. And that's what he just tries to brush it off under the rug with. Again, I don't believe that. Let's keep watching. Because I knew if I was being nasty about somebody that I would get attention. I don't feel great that I used Trish at her expense, but I guess what does help me sleep at night is knowing that I wasn't friends with Trish. She Not was just sleep a at night. public figure to me. I, I'm curious to know. Okay, so now we've heard Johnny say verbatim that he knew that he was being nasty to people around him while with these people that he kind of wants to get things from, not the least of which was attention. And so again, we're seeing where Johnny Trauma. has very clearly laid out. He will do anything to anyone as long as it makes him feel better about himself. And that will happen at all costs. Ooh. We'll see this play out a little bit more, and then we'll Lock wrap it up there again. You know, at what point did you have the realization that uh, the sending of Trisha nudes was inappropriate? There was. I mean, it, something always felt wrong, morally, deep down. But I think I was just more excited over the fact that it was a way to create a bond between me and these people. Well, when did when? Okay, so at what point did you realize you were being a terrible person? Oh, I always kind of realized that it was a terrible thing for me to do, but. I was getting things out of it, so that's okay. And then afterwards, he does a pretty substantial grin, and he does a very substantial soothing gesture here. And so those levels of agitation centered around that and then mixed in with the grin there, that does not make me feel like on any level there's remorse or a sense of being sorry for what he's done or even a sense of guilt for what he's done. It seems as though he's looking back fondly as to his own trail that he's blazed here while just throwing everybody that he can under the bus for his own gain. And he seems to be... Oh my god, I've now had two mods message me and say that they think that Johnny's watching... They may have gone through the records of names. Can we get some hi Johnnies in chat? Hi Johnny! Hi! 
How you doing? Quite fine with it. Let's keep watching. When did when do you think that you maybe it was in the last couple of years? Uh, mm-hmm. Did you have a moment where you were like you know looking back at the the, the nude photos thing and you thought, huh, that's actually really wrong? Watching Trisha's video, the difference between all right, gotta go ahead and pause this here again. This has been a couple years ago that this sitting back and forth of the nudes and inappropriate behavior and comments and everything around that, the tearing down of other people in regards specifically to Trisha. It's been a few years. So Swoop even offers him this out, you know, even within the past few years. Was there any times that you felt like the obvious nature of how wrong what you were doing is? And the- That's interesting as well that like Swoop provided an out for him. And I think she did that many times to be sympathetic. But God, he fucked it up every time. The answer is he didn't even consider it really until Trisha released her own video very recently. Years have passed so that Johnny has been fine with it, and it seems as though it's only when there might be a level of backlash that maybe some of this attention that he loves so much is going to be pulled away or misdirected or tainted in some way that he then realizes, oh, I was being an ass. Shoot, didn't even consider that for the prior few years. There are very little questions in my mind about who Johnny is. Let's keep watching. The difference between her and Colleen's videos were Colleen made an ass out of herself and thought she was being cute and funny and going to have a little viral moment. Call Trish what you want, but like I felt the authenticity and I felt the hurt. And, Tr- uh, yeah, Trisha, she came off devastated. Well, now that now that Trisha, ha- what frustrates me is that Johnny is saying, yeah, I can tell that Trisha was extremely devastated by the things that were done without at all acknowledging that he was the one who did that. He's the one at fault here. He's the one who, this, who could have done something differently. It's his responsibility as well. He refuses to view it that he way. He goes, oh, that sucks. Well, <laughs> because that does not inflate his ego on any level. Let's keep watching. Now that Trisha has made a video, Trisha is a victim in this story. I wanted to ask if there might be a time where you might consider taking those tweets down now that they kind of have served their purpose. Some of them did get taken down. That is actually why I was put in Twitter jail um, because of some of the photos. And I was like, are you effing kidding me? Like, it just seems stupid to me because I was like, okay, I get it. But also th- these are like crucial to my story. Just hearing your perspective, you're someone I really respect a lot. And so I will say with Trisha, I did have a better idea of how this plays out. I don't think she, I don't think, gonna go ahead and pause again here. This is, this is hard to listen to as Swoop is desperately trying to get Johnny to realize he's being trash. Desperately trying. And Johnny is just not acknowledging it. Or he'll acknowledge that what he's done is something terrible and then that he's more than happy to keep it the way it is because again, it fits his narrative. He's done terrible things. And he will not remove those terrible things because it helps him get attention. And Trauma. it's infuriating to me. Like, very, very infuriating. Here's a final attempt and then we'll, we'll wrap up. I don't think this is bringing her peace, having them out. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd like, gosh, I I didn't think they'd bring her peace. <laughs> I'll be honest. It was just a tea. <laughs> that smile was crazy. That smile was crazy of all of this so i saw trisha's video and i was like well that's not imposing okay little old me grin there at the end this could be a defensive gesture but he's also then verbally saying that like he knew that he was being a terrible person to trisha like he knew that pretty good and well and he was willing to ignore that he was a terrible person for several years until he started getting flack for it and then things started to happen and what you didn't hear from this portion but in a later interview very shortly after the swoop interview he did end up taking down all of these posts and used swoop's own words of being like, they don't serve purpose anymore, so I just deleted them. Whereas in this interview right here, we hear that he has no intention of doing that. Again, he views everyone around him, every circumstance around him, everything around him as stepping stones for himself. He's willing to stab people in the back. He's willing to lie. He's willing to manipulate people. He's willing to do anything necessary to be able to elevate his own self-importance. For anybody who's hanging out with Johnny, if you are in a position of more- Not the outro jazz music while he's ripping him to shit. Not him being like, he's the worst person I've ever met. And then in the background, he's like, do, 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 do. what the fuck? As stepping stones for himself. He's willing to stab people in the back. He's willing to lie. He's willing to manipulate people. He's willing to do anything necessary to be able to elevate his own self-importance. For anybody who's hanging out with Johnny, if you are in a position of more wealth, power, or anything that he might see as a potential for you to give him, be very prepared to be used for that. Very, very prepared because it seems as though that's his MO. So this was my little analysis of what I could be able to piece together at the Swoop interview here. What if you want to be able to see more centered around this subject, let me know in the comments below and also let me know what it is. That outro music was crazy. All right. This is insane. It put, it's, it puts so much into perspective for me that I hadn't even thought about. Come here, camera. Don't be shy. It put a lot into perspective that I hadn't even thought about. And I think because obviously Swip's video is four hours and I think I was also watching a lot of it 
from the perspective of being involved and finding information out for the first time. So I think I possibly missed a lot because there's a lot in this video that I'm like, holy shit, I missed that. Um, God. I just can't. I feel like I'm a pretty socially aware person. And I feel that if I'm doing something that like people are, it's all my teddies. Let me hide them. Hmm. Hmm. Hello. There we go. I feel like I'm a pretty socially aware person. And I feel like I can I can pick up if I'm upsetting someone and to kind of pull myself back. You know, I feel like this is a pretty common thing. Like maybe I'm I'm going on a tangent about something and maybe it's triggering to someone and I can pick up on that energy and I'll pull back on it. I feel like a lot of people can do that. Um and I think as well I can also very much so gauge if someone is, like, saying something without saying something. So if Swip was interviewing me and she asked me a question and I answered it, or I didn't answer it, and then she asked me again and I didn't answer it, and she asked me again and I didn't answer it, I'd be like, okay, she's asking me the same question over and over again, which means that I'm doing something wrong here. You know, let me take a moment. I can't imagine how he then gloated about the six-hour interview. When we watch it, he's being asked, literally Swip is like, okay, can I ask you for another time? And like, not picking up on that that was going to come back and bite you in the ass? Like, yeah, like no self-awareness. I think that's kind of the word I'm looking for here because obviously everyone's um, situation with social awareness is very, very, very different. And it's such a broad statement, right? So maybe self-awareness. Um... For me, I feel like I'm pretty self-aware and I feel like I would pick up on if if someone was asking me the same question over and over and over again that maybe I wasn't answering it or maybe my answer wasn't substantial enough. And again, that will be different for every single person, but I feel at a certain stage when you're being asked the same thing and you're answering the same thing every time, you would realize, right? I think it's because he was in an untouchable mindset because he created the perfect victim image for himself. He believes his lies that he thought it was a sufficient answer. Fucking hell. Anyway, I'm just reading through the comments here on Observe's video. Johnny's enthusiasm in his interviews was the thing that a lot of people noticed first when other victims were a lot more quiet and less cheery in comparison. Um... Someone said, uh, Swip and her team are the shit. They've blown the story wide open. Such a quality creator. Um, I feel so bad for Swip because she interviewed him, ready to listen to another victim, and instead got her own essay minimized to pretty cut and dry. His stating that he was so confident in his sexuality in the context of being in a chat with teenage girls is disturbing. Why did he bring his sexuality into mind? When in that context, unless there was something, you know, basically they're saying, like, why is he bringing it to, like, a sexual conversation? The most ridiculous part of the pick me up from the airport story is that it wasn't even a formal invitation that he got. Josh tweeted about his show and Johnny replied to that tweet saying something like he was going. And Josh said, yay, awesome. As Swip put it, if it was an invitation, all of us were invited to. Okay. Ooh, I see my name. Seems clear that Johnny's intentions from the beginning was achieving fame. He chose the husband. That didn't work. He switched to Colleen. That didn't work. Now he's seen the attention Adam is receiving and is trying to ride the train. Ironic word. Uh, by attempting to murr, outdo Adam and the other victims' stories. But it's all smoke and no fire. He's a terrible, self-absorbed per oh, Jesus, person who feels the world owes him something that he's never earned. I think it's best that we just stop saying his name. There's another one. So I'm pretty sure Adam said that Johnny is completely lying about bullying Adam and keeping him out of the tiny chats and said he doesn't know why Johnny is making all of this up because the years didn't even line up. True. So some of the red flags you picked up on were maybe because he was straight up making up stories about Adam since Adam is a big part of the story. All right. Yeah. The response is very, very, very similar to the ones I just read out. That was a great video, but it was crazy. I wonder if Milo has any statement.
What's your opinion on Johnny? Whoa, Milo, please, language. And what about Swip? What about Swip? Any opinion on Swip? What about Observe? Johnny? He is a good publicist, keeping him silent. Okay, one last question. What, who, whose team are you on? Are you team Johnny or team Josh? Team Johnny or team Josh? He has a really good publicist. Holy shit. Staying silent throughout it all. What was that? Did he say Johnny or Josh? Was that Josh? Was that Josh? Or Johnny? Josh? There we go. Thank you so much for your take, Milo. Really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day.